Move over, He-Man. Orion's here. And Skeletor, you're being usurped by Skull Man. This episode of Toy Tantrum, knockoffs of the universe. These are pretty cool. In 1982, He-Man hit the toy shelves and Star Wars took a hike. <laughs> These figures were bigger, badder, and that meant only one thing, knockoffs. Remco released these, Conan the Barbarian, based on the stories of Robert E. Howard. These figures were basically the same size and look as He-Man, and Mattel tried to sue but they lost because the judge said, basically, you don't own a barbarian. And so the doors to knockoffs were opened. I have done it, a perfect likeness of He-Man. Remco released a lot of amazing figures in this time period. They had licenses for things like DC's Warlord, but I'm not gonna get into those right now. We're gonna save those for another time. We're today gonna talk about all the weird, knockoff, cheap, crap figures that came out that you can get for a dollar or two that could be fodder for your Masters of the Universe heroes. Characters like Tiger Man, Baltard, Huck. These were brutal. They weren't even the right size. But you know what? Fast forward 35 years and they're some of the coolest and most collectible toys on the secondary market. This here is a Galaxy Warrior. This one's my absolute favorite, Baltard. I spoke about him in another video. Why do I like him so much? He's just so weird. He kind of looks like the missing link and a weird warrior from another planet. And he even came with his own mount, this strange battle cat tiger knockoff thing that doesn't even have a saddle that he can just kind of creep around and look for people to attack. But it doesn't matter, he's awesome. He comes with a breastplate, a shield, and an amazing weapon to savagely hack his enemies to pieces. He was just one of 12 Galaxy Warriors. Let's take a look at some of the other ones in the set. This is Hawk. He's almost like a North Lord, a warrior from the Icelands. The Galaxy Warriors featured anthropomorphic animals such as Tiger Man and Sahak, a snake warrior, villain, or was he? There was no clear definition between who the heroes and the villains were in this line. You can kind of make it up as you want. Imperial Toys out of Canada made all sorts of different mounts that could fit these types of lines. But then the knockoffs of the knockoffs came along. This here is a really weird dollar store knockoff and it looks almost like it's Skeletor's cat. But you know what? He's seen better days flimsy blow mold. As cheap as this might look, there's something to be said about how awesome they actually are. The nominees for best writing in a cartoon series are Strongdar, Master of Acom, The Wedding Episode. This line is one of my favorite knockoff He-Man lines, The Defenders of the Galaxy. Now these are flat out ripoffs. Orion? You can tell that's He-Man. Kind of looks like my friend Martin growing up. That 80s bowl cut going on. And by the way, if you're watching this, call me. I've been looking for you for a few years. Next, we have Zardoom. Now this guy kind of actually reminds me a little bit of Keldor, if you're familiar with Masters of the Universe. Keldor is who Skeletor was before he became Skeletor. But this wasn't part of the lore yet. So I often have to think about this and ask, did Mattel actually see this and get inspiration? Maybe. 
I love this guy. I don't actually know his name, but he's like this cyborg sort of trap jaw meets Terminator meets I don't know what, but a really cool figure. And I like that he has two points of articulation in his right cybernetic arm. Some of these figures even came in two packs with a companion. Really weird, far out beasts that were on a leash that could go into battle. Pretty cool. This one here I actually had as a kid. His name's Weapons Master. I used him as just an attorney of guard. But he almost looks like a knockoff of Ram Man. Pretty neat how much they could get away with just with a few little changes. Every kid in the 80s had knockoff toys in with their He-Mans. I know that the person behind the camera right now had his fair share of these as well. But with knockoffs, there came even more knockoffs. Knockoffs of the knockoffs. Confused? I am too. In fact, I would have to have a four or five hour video in order to show you every type of knockoff that came out during the 1980s. This is Batoon, and this is sort of Batoon. Not sure who he is, but he was actually recast from this figure and made into a wrestler. If you really want to go down the rabbit hole of knockoff He-Mans, you're going to fall into the world of knockoff wrestlers. This here is a knockoff of Andre the Giant. Now, I've seen Andre the Giant live. I followed his career, and he's never been ripped like that in his entire life. But it just goes to show how these molds were used and reused and reused over and over again. This wrestler is clearly a repaint of the Baltard figure from the Galaxy Warriors. And in fact, even later on, figures like the Turley Gang, which were knockoffs of Ninja Turtles, reused characters like this, and they are very rare right now and actually so hard to find. I'm looking for a Sato. If you have a Sato, let me know. And he's basically Baltard, only painted in black. The world of knockoffs continues to this day. These are by a company called Zololoft Toys, and they're called Realm of the Underworld. They're actually really cool figures. And if you look closely, they're actually made out of Remco molds from the old AWA wrestling lines. So it's sort of the reverse engineering of what happened in the 1980s. This here is made from a Sheik Adnan, and this one here, Hercules, is made from Nord the Barbarian. And if you take a look at those figures, you'll see that these are exact in every way. With the popularity knockoffs on the shelves, other toy companies jumped in to take a piece of the pie. She-Ra, one of the most popular girl toys of the 80s, even had her fair share of knockoffs. This is one of the Golden Girls by Galoob, a line that was essentially the exact same as She-Ra. Golden Girl and the Guardians of the Gemstone, each sold separately, new from Galoob. These figures are actually quite cool. They have steel accessories and rooted hair, capes, and really vicious weapons. I actually have the whole collection of these. These are great alongside other toy lines to make wonderful fantasy scenes. There are so many different toy knockoffs from the Masters of the Universe. I tend to take things that are not actual direct ripoffs of the characters from He-Man. There's a lot of amazing blow molds from Mexico of He-Man, Skeletor, Orko, and some of them are really, really well made, and some of them just look like they were made in a, I don't know where, just trash. But there's a collector's market for all of this stuff. Believe it or not, some of these figures are even worth more than their counterparts, the licensed ones. I absolutely adore these figures. I think that if I had the money, I'd be buying these left, right, and center if I definitely had the room. There's even a playset that was manufactured by Remco, a giant cardboard knockoff Castle Grayskull. If you go to the European side of things, there's an amazing monster castle, and it's this big green tower with a big glow-in-the-dark hand. Wicked cool fun piece that would add to any collector's display of Masters of the Universe, Galaxy Warriors, whatever it is you have it, they go hand in hand. They're really, really fun. Thanks for joining me for part one of Knockoffs of the Universe, or Masters of the Knockoffs, whatever you want to call it. Part two, we're going to focus on the Remco lines like Conan the Barbarian, here's Thothamon, and the Warrior Beasts, and all sorts of other fun and exciting lines that were made 
to go hand in hand with your Masters of the Universe. These ones are way better quality, they're to scale, and they are extremely collectible. Every question has an answer, and I'm the man with those answers inside my head. What is it you want to know about toys? It's that time of the show, the Q&A. All right, Lawrence asks, are there any toys that you collect for a show or a movie that you actually don't know anything about? Yes, there is. The pool toys from the 1980s of Doctor Who. I have no clue anything about Doctor Who. I know it's about a guy that flies around in a, like a foam box or something, but these toys are pretty cool. That's like a Dalek. I think that's like a robot or there's an alien inside or something like that. This guy is, I think his name is, Ultraman or something like that. You see, this is why I don't know anything about these. And then that's Doctor Who or one of the many that they made. And uh, that, I don't know who that is. He's just a cool looking alien. And then I guess this is the doctor's girlfriend, but her name's Melanie, I think. But I don't know anything about these. So that being said, they're pretty cool figures nonetheless. And I kind of want to get them all, even though I have no clue what they are. I wouldn't even know who the good guys are or the bad guys. One more thing about Doctor Who, the show I know nothing about. I know that that's Tom Baker, and I know that this Mego figure is really cool. He even has a little umbrella. I wonder if he has any jelly beans. Oh, I knew that. Here's a question people ask me when they actually visit me in my toy museum, and they ask, what is the most boring toy that was ever made? I think it's probably the one toy that has absolutely no play value, and it's... Gabe Kaplan from Welcome Back, Cotter. Mr. Cotter was a teacher in a comedy series in the 1970s. Nothing wrong with the series. I love Gabe Kaplan, but this figure has no play value. I mean, really, all he can do is stand in front of a bunch of other dolls that just sit there in a classroom and do nothing. He doesn't even have hands that can hold a weapon or an apple or anything. Yeah, Mr. Cotter. Still a cool figure, but no, no play value. All right, Nina asks, what toy do you have in your collection that didn't age well? Not the condition of the toy, but the subject matter of the toy. I think I know. It's the OJ Simpson doll by Shinyana Toys. This was made in the 70s when OJ was at the height of his career and was a uh, national icon and hero. Uh, clearly, that changed pretty quickly in the early 90s and of course recently with his uh, little incidences with the law. Still a cool doll. Still Bobby Orton. So many questions, so many answers. What would you like to know on an upcoming episode of Toy Tantrum? Be sure to ask me in the comments below and like and subscribe. His name's Hawk, but if you look at the painting of the Ice Warrior, I don't know what it's called. It's not called the Ice yeah, Warrior. Yeah, focused it though. We already covered that in the... Fuck, we already covered it. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. right, so I'll just say this. I'll just say Frank Fazette, okay? Uh, yeah. He was released with this amazing steed. Check this out. Is it a steed? It's not what it is. Mount. Actually, He-Man, you're kind of just a knockoff of me. No. And uh, Battle Cat? He's just a repaint of a big gym tiger. No, he isn't. Uh, actually, you want to know something else? I don't. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Always at this one tripod. Right, three, two, one, go. Shh. Quiet. <laughs>